All right, Bobcat, so in this video, we're gonna go over the GI tract models. So the first thing that I wanna point out, so you're looking at all of these particular layers, and the first thing is, well, how do you distinguish between what part it is of the GI tract? So the first thing that I look at is the epithelium. So over here, I can see that this is the esophagus because you have the stratified squamous epithelium. From here, we're transitioning into the first part of the stomach, which is the cardia. So you can see how these two layers, you're transitioning from stratified squamous to simple columnar epithelium. So that's what this is up here. So, but just looking at it from a whole, let's say that I have just one model out. What's gonna help you to distinguish besides looking at the epithelium is looking at what's here on top. So for instance, I know that these three here are all related to the stomach based off of these gastric pits that are here. So I know that these three are the stomach because of the gastric pits. And then this is transitioning from here into the, into the small intestine. And I know that based off of this because all of these are what's known as the villi. So the villi, they increase the surface area for absorption because within the duodenum or within the small intestine, so this is what's representing the um, duodenum, but this is the primary site for the absorption of nutrients um, that occurs here. These are these, some of the capillaries. So then now, so then looking at, looking at the other two structures, I see um, here at the top. So this here is the appendix, and then this one here is just, uh, this one is just the colon or the large intestine. Okay, so now that you're able to distinguish between each individual one, let's look at the specific um, regions of them. So I already said this one is the esophagus, and then this one here, this is the top part, which is the cardia. So the next one here, this is the body of the stomach. And then this is the terminal end of the stomach, the pylorus. So then moving on to this one. So this is the first part of the small intestine, which is what's known as the duodenum. And then this one over here, this is what's known as um, the jejunum. So the second part of the small intestine. Okay, so then you, you may think to yourself, well, how, how am I able to distinguish between what's each um, different part? Well, looking at the cardia compared to the body of the stomach. So within the body, you have these spe specialized glands here. So these here are the gastric glands and you have the parietal and then the chief cells. So that's, so the chief cells are here in red or these are, these are the parietal cells and then the chief cells are the other ones that are here surrounding the outside. So that's how you um, distinguish here compared to um, this part so now we're moving at the terminal end because we're transitioning into the duodenum or the duodenum. So we don't have all of these uh, different glands here within the pylorus. So now the next, the next thing, so then how do you distinguish between the duodenum and the jejunum? So you can look at these specific um, specialized, so these are the um, mucosal glands. So these mucosal, gland, mucosal glands, they're gonna secrete an um, alkaline um, mixture. Okay, so then, um, and then you can also see from over here, now we look at this large structure which is known as the lymphatic follicle. So these are the lymphatic follicles, so this is part of immunity. And then, so you have the lymphatic follicle and then you also have something that's known as the lymphatic nodule, so that's what's up here. This would be the follicle. Okay, so something that's similar between all of them is that they all have four particular layers. So you have, first off, the, um, first off you have the mucosa, then you have the submucosa, and then you have the muscularis externa, and then you have the serosa. So this is found throughout all of these, all of these models. And what distinguishes each particular layer is, so for instance, for the, for the mucosa, you have the muscularis mucosa, which is this top layer. So this is found in all of them. You can see it in, on all of, these, all of these models. 
coming all the way down. So then the next layer, which is the submucosa, that's in between the next layer of muscle. Because for the muscularis externa, you have the, um, first off, the circular muscularis, and then the longitudinal muscularis. So that's what these are. So this is for the muscularis externa. So here, you can see it in all the particular layers. Okay, so um, next, the next thing I want to point out is one of the specialized features. So if you look at uh, the body of the stomach, this is the oblique layer of muscle here compared to the next two, right, which is, what, which is what's in all of them. Okay, so the last thing here that I want to point out is, so this is an artery and then this is a vein. I know that because this is thicker compared to this one, the, mu the muscle layer. Um, the next thing I want to go over, I want to show you is the different uh, goblet cells. So if you look at the GI tract model, so starting here um, where the duodenum is, you can see all of these goblet cells. So that's what's here in white. So these goblet cells are dispersed throughout it, and this is what's they're going to secrete uh, mucus. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Okay, so now we're going to look at the individual models themselves and look at some of the details here. So first off, you have the excretory duct, which is number seven, and then you can also see uh, number six. This is what's known as um, the esophageal, esophageal gland. And then if you look at uh, number nine, this is an arterial, and then I've already pointed out the other structures um, that are found on this. This is the lymphatic nodule. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the cardia, the first part. So you can still see the esophageal gland because we're um, transitioning into the first part of the stomach, the cardiac, or the cardia. So that would make number 17, these are the cardiac glands. So you can still see uh, some of the different um, arterioles there, and then you can see some of the capillaries here at the top. Uh, another thing to point out, so uh, number 18 here um, at the bottom. So this is the serosa, serosa layer. Okay, so let's move on to the next, next structure, next model. Um, the first thing that I want to point out, so this here, lymphatic, this is what's known as the uh, lymphatic nodule, so that's number three. And that'll do it for this one. Uh, other thing is the gastric pit. So if you look at it from this perspective, you can see the gastric pits here at the top. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this one's a little bit bigger, so let me bring it down some. Okay, so uh, one of the things you can see here, because uh, number, number 24, because once again, this is the terminal end, so this is the pylorus gland. So that's number um, 24, the pyloric gland. And then um, 28, because now we're getting into the um, duodenum, this is the duodenal gland. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. Okay, so you can see, I've already pointed out the uh, mucosal glands, and then once again, these are the goblet cells. Um, these are the uh, crypts, the intestinal crypts are there. Okay, so that'll do it for that one. Move onwards to this one. Um, you can see the crypts there once again, and I've already pointed out all the other uh, structures on this one. And these two, So some of the specialized, uh, specialized features, I've pointed out uh, pretty much all of them. The other one to add is number um, 32. This is what's known as the, this is the opening for the glandular duct. And so this is the last one. So there's no other specialized features on, on this one here. So that's gonna do it.